So we are recording now, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the Sight and Sound Surgery. This is session five and the final session of this, our very first summer school. And what a great week we've been having. It's been a, um, a very busy week at Sight and Sound, but I think a very interesting week for us because usually when you do these things, you end up learning quite a lot. And I remember on Monday afternoon, Sharon and I both learned uh, a keystroke. I learned an awful lot on Tuesday afternoon about Ruby magnifiers because, to be honest, I, I, my knowledge on them was very, um, very rudimentary. On Wednesday afternoon, uh, Ruth Gallagher Carr talked to us all about Zoom text. Yesterday, we delved into focus braille displays. And today, really, the agenda is up to you. Um, we wanted to end this session with a bit of a free for all and a bit of time to explore any questions or issues or queries you may have and indeed anything you think we should be doing in the future in these sessions because this is not uh, you know for us a once off we want to develop this idea of online training and make more of it available to you so we're going to be here for the next hour and a half or so same rules apply as previously and sharon went through them very concisely yesterday but the zoom platform um, is available to you throughout the session, of course. If you would like to send a chat message, you can do so on your Windows uh, computer by pressing Alt and H, typing in the chat area and pressing Enter. Or you can, on iOS or Android, press the appropriate button on your app to start a chat. You can also raise your hand by pressing Alt and Y, and we will see your hand raised and we'll come to you for your question. To try to manage this a little bit, what I'm proposing to do is to unmute the sight and sound colleagues who are in the room. And then if people have questions, we will, um, we will come to you and unmute you so you can ask your question. So I hope that makes sense because it might be the easiest way for us to manage this. Um, we actually have some questions that came in earlier already. So I'm gonna go through those first. And then we will, um, we will go from there and see what other questions people have. So Matt, Ash and Sharon are hopefully unmuted now. Yep. And I might uh, just start, um, oh, and I suppose finally just to say that this session will also be available as a podcast um, after, uh, after the session ends. We usually try and publish them later on in the evening. Now we got a query on after Wednesday's session, actually after Wednesday's Zoom text session from a gentleman named Eamon O'Connor, who's actually living here in Dublin. Um, he's recently purchased um, Fusion. He is a JAWS user, he doesn't really use Zoom text much, but he has recently purchased uh, Fusion as he has a couple of programs that are very visual. And he had a few questions for us. So the first question uh, is uh, regarding Fusion. Um, is, there sp is there specific training available online for Fusion? Um, so I know there is some stuff on the Freedom Scientific website, Matt, that you guys uh, referenced here. Uh, yeah, hi, Stuart. Yeah, um, so you, you guys, I think yourself and Ash referenced some training materials on the Freedom Scientific website for Fusion. That's it, yeah, because essentially it's um, two products spliced together. Uh, Freedom haven't rewritten uh, any manuals, um, but they've just pointed us to uh, the Zoom text and the, the JAWS keystrokes. Um, so we have, I think, forwarded you on a link. Um, so at some point, if either Sharon or yourself could put that on. Yeah. Or I can try and dig it out myself. Yeah, we can, we can stick it into the chat window here uh, in a few minutes. Um, I will do that shortly. Um, and there is, of course, training available from Sight and Sound for, uh, from JAWS Fusion as well, if, if Eamon is interested. Um, okay, then we also had... Uh, um, Okay, so that, that was that question around training. Um, and Eamon also asked about the Pearl camera and uh, use of the Pearl camera and open book. Um, so I think the query was in relation to getting, downloading open book uh, previous versions, which are still available on the, um, 
on the Freedom Scientific website. Sorry, I'm just trying to find Eamon's other question because I know there's okay. three. Grab those from you, Stuart. I think I've got them here. Sorry, so. Ash. Thank you. That's all right. I think Eamon said um, he's using the Pearl camera either to view or scan documents, and he's asking if he should use JAWS, Zoom Text, or Fusion. Um, so the answer to that is you can use the Pearl camera in Fusion or JAWS by using the insert and space command. If you press those both together, and then followed by O, then A, that will tell the Pearl to uh, perform OCR, but it does not work within Zoom Text Mag Reader. So in Fusion or JAWS, it's okay, but not so much in the Zoom Text Mag Reader. Um, and his other question about Open Book, and he said he, um, he had a CD, is that no longer relevant? Um, the answer to that is it's likely an older build of Open Book on that CD. So we'd recommend downloading from freedomscientific.com slash downloads. And that way you'll always get the latest version. Okay. Thanks, Ash. And um, Eamon, I hope that helps uh, your query. Michael has just posted on the chat to say, are we going to be talking about different cursors in JAWS? We certainly are. We're going to come to that in a little while. I've made a note to do that as well. Another question that came in uh, from somebody else uh, in relation to Zoom Text Fusion uh, was in relation to the background reader, of whether the background reader is available in Zoom Text Fusion specifically. So few, uh, the background reader was what Ruth demonstrated on Wednesday. I think, Sharon, you, you were mentioning this as well, because um, it allows you to record, uh, to take audio from any Windows application and make a recording of it. Um, so we know that the, the the reader is not available. Sharon is muted for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Let me try and fix that. Just unmute everybody for a second. Hi. Sharon, you should I'm be able back. to speak. I'm back now. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, the Zoom text uh, background reader. Yeah. So it's just um, uh, like the Fusion, as Matt says, is a... Hi. JAWS and Zoom text splice together. Oh, got a young attendee there. <laughs> <They're getting> younger. <laughs> yeah, so it's just seeing what, what which um, software will will work. I mean, with Fusion, you get all three anyway, so you can open Zoom text separately. Uh, okay, thank you, Sharon. Uh, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, right, I'm going to. Is there anybody who has a question that they would like us to talk about? Somebody um, was talking about um, JAWS and PDF. Sarah has a question, so let me get to Sarah first and we'll go from there and then we'll see who else has raised hands. Yeah, I think it was Don last question about PDF just uh, and he had his hand raised there. And Don, we'll get to you in a moment as well. Um, okay, so we're going to go first of all to Sarah. And Sarah, I think you should be no, you're not unmuted yet. Apologies. Um, so we go to Sarah first, and then we'll go to Don. So Sarah, you're unmuted if you want to ask your question. One quick question. Is there a site that does um, commands for JAWS and PowerPoint? Um, so there is PowerPoint help built into JAWS. Um, I'm going to bring Matt in here as well, or, and Ash, but there is help within JAWS for PowerPoint. Um, uh, there may be other training material on the Freedom Scientific website. Yeah, I've, uh, I've looked at that, Stuart. There is some um, webinars, uh, not webinars, um, seminars on the um, Freedom Scientific training page. Yeah, I was just going to say, look at that also. Okay. okay. Sarah, does that answer your question? Um, yeah. Okay. 
I say the, the thing is with PowerPoint, remember, it's still a very visual product and moving around different text boxes, making sure they don't overlap can be very difficult. So it's a case of tabbing onto an object, interacting with the object, and then making sure that um, you use the keystrokes provided to see if things do overlap. Don't always trust it, though, because it does say things overlap when they're absolutely perfect on the page. Um, yeah. But from a visual perspective it will be perfect but from a jaws perspective it could say overlapping so you might be a little bit worried so do you have any residual sight at all or not um not no okay um so we, we maybe a bit of a bit of trial and error um but um yeah i want to say it's still a very visual product so please bear that in mind um mm -hmm. but um but yeah please look at the keystrokes and if there is anything we can help with just uh, send us along there man and we can try and help you and, and maybe Sarah, just to add to that, I would just say that um, I have delivered, I have used PowerPoint to deliver presentations a lot. So in other words, to, you know, to stand up and present with PowerPoint. Yeah. I will never, ever, and I don't mind saying this publicly, I will never, ever make a presentation on my own and send it out without running it past a sighted person because I don't think the technology is at a point yet where we can do that and be confident that it's going to work. Yeah, so. I did get someone invited to look at it before, hand, like presenting it, because I just wasn't comfortable. Yeah. Take it down. I'll pass it on to the engineer. If that's all right. Okay. Um, thank you for that, Sarah. Um, that's been, that's been a really good question. Now we're going to bring Don in. Don, you're online. If you want to chat. Hi. Yes, I'm a tech volunteer with RNIB. I was visiting a guy uh, two or three weeks ago who was having trouble with JAWS reading Adobe Acrobat attachments. And um, Sight and Sand kindly sent me a list of mods to do on the reader, uh, depending on the version, which I went through and changed. And when I finished, the attachment could be read immediately if it was opened but none of the JAWS commands worked. So the stop, start and things like that just didn't work. It seemed you could read it, but you couldn't edit the reading. Um, th there are so many variables, uh, I suppose here, because it depends on the type of PDF. It depends on the version of Adobe, the version of JAWS. Um, yeah, it was JAWS 15. It was the uh, latest continuous update of Adobe, and, but it was running on Win 7. Um, I can add to that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, with, yeah, with Adobe, like you say, there are some variables. We do like to have Adobe set up with a certain configuration. Um, what I tend to do is um, if I do a Google search for Zoom text Adobe Reader settings, there's actually a link on the so it's on the Zoom text website, but the same settings I tend to find applied for JAWS also. Um, if you go into it, basically involves going into the Adobe Reader edit menu, yeah. um, and going into preferences, and there are certain um, configurations in there that you need to just change to make it more um, accessible for it. Yeah, which I think was the list that Sight and Sound sent me. That uh, probably was the list. Yeah, we, we that's well, quite common. I'll check that. Also, it may be going into a virtual cursor mode as well. Um, so it may be worth pressing insert Z just to see what it does okay. at that point, um, because there is a virtual cursor overlay on there as well that you can get. And you, you weren't trying to like edit the document where you did. No, just... no, it was just trying to stop reading at a certain point and then start again. Okay. Yeah, I'd really recommend those settings if you've already done that. Did that, did you say that helped you? Or? No, well... It helped in the sense, before, when I started with him, it wouldn't be at all. When I finished changing all the settings, it mm. wouldn't be it. But you couldn't stop at a particular point and then restart. The moment you press the, the JAWS key, you know, for the reading keys, it immediately bombed out. Okay, the, the other thing that uh, might be handy is if um, it could be a, a localised thing as well. So I don't know if you're ever going back there, but it might be worth getting a team viewer session with us so we can dial in and have a look for you. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, Don, thanks very much for that question. Really, really useful. 
I, I think in general, PDFs, um, you know, the, the really well markups PDFs will read just like a web page. You'll have headings, you'll have links, they'll feel very web-like. Um, that's the really good ones. I, I, I don't know, um, Ash or Matt, do, do you guys just want to very briefly, you mentioned the, the, uh, the settings for TeamViewer or the fact that you can use TeamViewer there just to maybe explain to people what TeamViewer is and how useful it can be from a tech support perspective. Have I muted one of you guys? I think I may have, apologies. Um, sorry, I think I unmuted muted somebody by mistake. Hi there. Um, yeah, sorry, Ash. Um, yeah, TeamView we use like all the time on a, on a daily basis, really. If, if there's ever an issue that we can't easily solve over the phone, um, we often require TeamViewer so we can connect into someone's machine remotely. Um, it involves you just running a quick file from our website and then you'll be given like an ID number and a password. And when you give that to us, we can then share your screen and control your computer, giving you sort of you know, just, um, sit back while we do all the, all the work, really. It's just helpful for both ourselves and, and the user. It also, also helps with uh, people who can't explain or draw to stop working. So it gives us a quick view as to what's going on. Um, you know, we might get a message up there that George is already for some reason. Um, so it is a very, very handy tool. Yeah, I, and I certainly, it does, as, as Ash said, it speeds up the whole tech support experience. Um, it can be extremely useful. Okay, um, Sarah has raised her hand. So Sarah, you're back on. If you'd like to ask your question. Sorry, Sarah, you're back on now. Apologies. You're grand. Um, that help suggestion that Matt was talking about, is that only available on the desktop version of Sight and Sound? When you say the desktop version... As in version if you were on a laptop with JAWS. Um, no, there should be no... Uh, you can use it on a, a desktop or a laptop. So uh, it doesn't matter what it's on. Like, could you use it on, let's say, if you were on phone, or would it not be accessible? Uh, are we still on about Team Viewer, guys? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a there is a version you can get for a phone, I believe. Yes. I think it's called the Team Viewer Quick Support. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we actually, sorry, sorry, Stuart. Yeah, we actually dial into um, a lot of the smart vision phones uh, using the quick uh, support available for the Android phone now as well. Okay. Um, right, guys. Thank you very much for that. Now I'm going to. I'm conscious there's quite a few people in this room who haven't um, maybe raised their hand yet, but who may have a question. So for a moment, I'm just going to unmute everybody, and if you have a question. Um, please feel free to ask it and maybe if you can say your name I'll mute everybody else except you to make sure that you have a chance to ask your question with minimum noise okay Good. Sharon. Um, is it time for the Jaws curses because I know this um, people are dying to hear about it <laughs> yeah we can do the Jaws cursors if there's if if everybody's happy to do that oh, sorry. Yes, yes, please. Okay. I hope you off anyway, so. okay, let's have a look at some JAWS cursors then. Um, I've agreed to take this little slot. Um, so what I'm going to do is just um, share my screen so that hopefully everybody will be able to hear JAWS. And share my computer sound. Um, actually, before I do that, I need to, I need to just, uh, get my JAWS sound, sound card changed. Okay. Let me just share my audio now. I'll start at screen. Alert, you are muted. Press ALT to unmute your microphone or press and hold the space key to 
Leaving menu. Meeting controls. Menu. Meeting controls. Leaving menus. Jaws professional. Jaws professional. Jaws professional. Alert from Sharon Lyons to me. Stuart, you are muted. Meeting controls. Men. Alert. Audio now on mute. Okay, sorry, folks. I was muted. I'm not sure what's happening to Zoom today. It's doing some funny things. <laughs> it obviously knows we're at the end of the week. Uh, right. We're going to try the the this jaws curse these cursors again. Leaving. Um, there are four cursors in as part of the jaws screen reader, but. 99.999% of people, and I am in that bracket, uh, only use three of the four. Um, so there is the PC cursor, which is your everyday live cursor, or the carrot, as they call it, that moves around the screen. That's what, that's what a, a sighted person visually sees. Uh, and the PC cursor is wh wh what you're using most of the time. And when we're on the web, the PC cursor becomes the virtual cursor. So I kind of see those as one. And um, Matt mentioned the virtual cursor a few minutes ago in relation to PDFs. Then there's the JAWS cursor, which moves typically the mouse pointer. The JAWS cursor has probably become a Alert. little Money less has the meeting. useful uh, um, of late than it was previously. Um, that's because the way in which Windows applications work and the way in which information is being sent to the screen reader has to some degree changed. Um, and indeed, you may find many times when you go into your JAWS cursor, you just hear blank. So Freedom Scientific realized this a couple of years ago and they developed and um, introduced something that's called the touch cursor. And the touch cursor has, is really for those times when, when an application is not accessible to the PC or JAWS cursor. And it, it acts or works a little like how you might swipe when you're using a touch screen on an iPhone or an Android phone. So you move. Um, Alert. Fact, one of the left first the things you notice about your touch cursor is you move from left to right instead of up and down. So the touch cursor is something that is um, used more and more in Windows applications, and we'll try and give an example of that in a minute. So I'm currently on the PC cursor. I will give laptop and, key and um, keyboard um, shortcuts for this as I go along. To enable the PC cursor on a laptop, you press uh, caps lock with semicolon. PC. And JAWS says PC or PC cursor. And on a desktop, you press the plus key on the number pad. If you want to enable the JAWS cursor, you press shift with the, or caps lock, sorry, with the left bracket key on a laptop. JAWS. And it says JAWS or JAWS cursor, depending on how you have your verbosity set. And on a, um, on a desktop, you press the minus sign, which is the very right hand, top right hand corner on the numeric keypad just above that long plus key. Um, one thing, one keystroke I use all the time, well, I use a lot, is uh, rooting or bringing or jumping the PC cursor to where the JAWS cursor is. So quite frequently, I know that I need to click something with my mouse and I want to be able to move right to that area. So I have my PC cursor at a particular point and I want to bring the PC cursor to where the JAWS cursor is. Um, so I root or I move the JAWS cursor to the PC cursor. On a desktop, you press insert and the minus key. And on a laptop, you press shift and the right bracket key. JAWS to PC. And it says JAWS to PC, or it may see, say for you, root JAWS to PC. PC. So just to show you this in its most basic form, if I go to the desktop with Windows and D. Menu, leaving menus, folder view, list view. And I let just literally na navigate around my desktop, but with my PC cursor. Sight and sound, summer school 2019. Zoom. So Semantic can, endpoint, see, Skype for business. Notes of the Daisy Braille and music I'm just route. navigating around my, um, my desktop with my live or PC cursor. If I want to do this with the JAWS cursor, I will go to my JAWS cursor. JAWS, 
Reader DC for DBTO. Semantic under notes underline dot dot dot. Reader DC um, for bit 14 DC. Foot with build. Dot 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 blank. So now I'm moving around with my JAWS cursor and it's reading uh, icons, but it's also, it's kind of reading, um, not reading everything perfectly clearly because I have so much stuff on my desktop. Stuart Elarm. help. You. R two type message here. Um, and now actually the, the JAWS cursor Jaw is picking up the Desktop focus one. of the zoom Jaw window. Reader DC blank here lips it message type left parent private so JAWS the JAWS PC. cursor could in this case be used to click on an icon if I could find the icon. Um, but let's just go in for a moment to the Windows store. Uh, the Windows 10 store. So to do that, I'll hit the search key, the start menu key. And Cortana, menu, meeting controls, leaving menus, search box edit. Type store. Microsoft store app, and I'll press, press right. Enter on Microsoft Touch store. Microsoft store button, spotlight, play the free McLaren and by update. By default now, uh, you might have heard Jaws say touch. I'm in the touch cursor. Play the free McLaren and you can update. Hear it clicks. Download free plus up free. I am pressing my right arrow as I move. I'm almost, for all intents and purposes, I'm swiping through this screen. Box game passes. Just box to game prove pass. this to you, if I went back to my PC cursor, Your PC. nothing is happening. My PC cursor has no effect. My JAWS cursor. JAWS to PC settings. HS articles 201 reader settings when using Zoom text from Matthew Bateman to everyone. The, my JAWS cursor actually still thinks is still trying to pick up bits of Zoom, so that doesn't even see the, the, the Windows Store at all. Yeah, this touch cursor is what we need for the store. Now, I, because I switched off my touch cursor to go into the JAWS cursor, I have to get back to it, and that's with um, Shift, Caps Lock, and Semicolon on a, P, on a laptop or on a desktop. It's Shift, Caps Lock, and Plus Key on the numeric keypad. Touch. And here we go. The brilliant, get the brilliant, angry bird crab. Now I'm in, back in my store and I'm looking at, uh, in this case, games that I could purchase. You'll see more and more Windows 10 applications and even things like the settings screen in Windows 10. Um, when you want to change system settings, you really need to um, interrogate these with the touch cursor because there is a lot more available to you if you go into the touch cursor and uh, swipe around. If you want to activate something in the touch cursor, so if you come to a button um, that you want to activate, you simply press enter. If you happen to reach an edit box with your touch cursor and you want to input some information, once you press enter, forms, forms mode will kick in and your PC cursor will become live again in that edit box. So they've done it really well. Um, and as Windows evolves, I think the touch cursor and the use of the touch cursor is going to evolve with it. Job easy. So I'm going to close the store because Desktop. we don't Full want to buy alert. Michael Enriquez right. raised I'm hand. Going to, oh. I know Michael has raised his hand. We'll come to that in a sec. I'm going to close the, um, the screen share. Alert. And I'm going to, um, in just a moment, we'll get to uh, Michael's query. I'm just re, re, rearranging my jaws. So I'm going to just unmute. Um, I'm going to unmute Michael for a moment because Michael was the person who had the question about the, uh, the different cursors. And of course, just to say, if people do have questions, please do um, either raise your hand or write in the chat window. And uh, to any of my colleagues in Sight and Sound, if you spot any messages in the chat or people's hands raised that I don't see, uh, please let me know. Michael, you're unmuted if you'd like to speak. Thank, thank you, Stuart. Um, it was a question about versions of JAWS. You're talking about these various um, different cursors. Are they appropriate in all versions of, of JAWS? Because in different places I'm using from version 15 at the office, to um, I, I'm sorry, I've just unmuted Matt and Ash as well. I do, be, I do believe, um, Michael, that the. I do believe the touch cursor came in in version 20, in JAWS 17, I think, or JAWS 18. So it was before the version numbering changed. Um, if you're using Office, you, you, you don't find. I beg Sorry. your pardon. When I said office, what I meant was I was located in, 
in Judd Street. That's what I meant by office. Sorry. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Got two jaws. You don't necessarily need to, to learn all the jaws, keyboard commands and things. Um, um, so you, yes, yeah, don't, um, you don't need to... Um, um, Sorry, I'm just switching off the guys in Northampton for a sec. Uh, you can use, um, I think it's from version 17, the touch cursor started. Um, and obviously the, the, the JAWS and PC cursors have been there for forever. Right, yes, of course. Um, have, have you, I mean, are you using these in, is it Windows 10 you're using? Um, I am at home. Okay. Um, and did that answer your questions about how they work, Michael? Yes. I was just worried about the touch cursor. Can people enable the cursors on previous versions of JAWS? If it's, if it's a version from 17 onwards, yes. So if it's version 15, which is what they're using there, then they can't. Because sometimes I just get completely kaflummoxed. Certainly when you're logging in, you suddenly everything goes quiet. Okay. Um, yeah, it would be worth, first of all, finding out what version of JAWS they're on. Well, it says it's an, 15. No, it's not in fifth. So 15 is not going to work with the touch cursor. So have, can they patch it? No, you'd need to upgrade. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Don, you had your hand up, so I'm going to bring you on. Sorry, Michael. Um, did that answer your question? I think so. I, I need to play it a bit more, but you've explained it quite well. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, uh, we're going to bring in um, Don, I believe, I'm having very funny experiences with Zoom today, I'm afraid, sorry about this guys. Um, just while I'm trying to sort this out, uh, just to remind people that if you want to uh, go to chat, you can do Alt and H and uh, type your message, or if you want to raise your hand, you can do Alt and Y, and we will see your hand and bring you in. Uh, we're trying to mute people. Um, we're, trying to, uh, we're trying to mute people, rather, um, just to allow people to be heard and that we can get through as many questions as we can. Now, um, we had a question from Don. So Don, I think you should be unmuted now. Yes, thank you. Um, given that it's JAWS 17 and above, would uh, that work on Windows 7? Yes, but the touch cursor doesn't really, I th the touch cursor is really only going to be very useful on Windows 8.1 to a degree, but definitely Windows 10. But it will, in theory, work in Windows 7, and there may be some applications that will utilize it more than others. Okay, thanks. No problem. Um, okay, I'm going to just unmute everyone for a sec, because there may be people who want to say something and they haven't put something in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, Phil, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, two quick questions. Uh, the first one, could you just repeat again the command for the, um, the touch cursor? Because I've never used that, actually. Yes. So on a desktop, it's uh, shift with the plus key on the keypad. And on a laptop, it's caps lock with the semi, uh, sorry, shift and caps lock with the semicolon key. Okay. So that's my first question. Secondly, um, I was just wondering whether uh, one of the uh, people who are into Braille displays could uh, tell <coughs> The difference, say, between the Alva displays and uh, and the um, the focus ones. I mean, the, the, for, for money for money sort of thing. But what's best, really? Can you could you uh, apply supply either one of those? I'm not familiar enough with the Alva series to really comment on that or to do a comparison. I don't know if if Matt or Ash can say anything about those. I mean, are we we primarily it's focus and hymns are the displays that we do, but I don't know if the guys want to say anything about that. Yeah, no, I've got very limited uh, exposure to it there. Yeah, sorry about that, Phil. We, we, it's, it, we can really, it's just, the, you know, the ones we do are the focus on hymns displays. Okay, fair enough, okay. Uh, just to say the rest of the room is open as well. Would, any, would anybody else? Everyone call and 
thanks very much. Well, anyone else like to say anything? Uh, Don, I know you have to head off, and thank you very much for your, for your input. Would anyone else like to ask any questions? Alert, Don has left the meeting. Uh, yeah, me again, if <laughs> there's no one else. I don't want to hog it, but um, I'm having a bit of a problem with um, 2018 JAWS. Um, I'm trying to get it sort of so that it maximizes what I can use in my 14 character um, display. I, for example, I don't want the, the date and the status and all that. I just want to read a, a file name if I'm in a, in a music track list, for example. I just want to read the full uh, title of the, of, the, of the record I'm going to play on the air or whatever. Um, is, could somebody, not necessarily now, but some, at some point help me get the correct set because um, it, it kind of, Jaws 18 jumps all over the place. One minute, um, it, you know, it goes into columns and all kind of weird things and only shows me part of words and things like that. So I need someone who really knows what they're doing with, uh, to get the settings right for um, Focus 14. Can someone help me on that one? Yeah, it gives a, gives a shout in the office if you need to. Okay, I'll, I'll do that then. It's just a matter of finding the time because I'm on air seven hours a week, so. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it on air. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Matt would love to be on the radio. Oh, well, I, I play uh, 50s to 80s music. I don't think uh, chatting would be uh, quite the thing for Big L Radio. But Go still. on, you might, you might as well plug your show now that you're here. When are you on? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm on seven hours a week. Uh, Saturday nights is my main show, 8 to 10 p.m., and that's the Phil Troll Extravaganza. Um, and then on Monday and Fridays from 10 a.m. until 12, uh, my wife and I, uh, we sit in for Steve James, who's uh, not available at the moment, but it is his show. Uh, so that's 10 to 12, Monday and Fridays. And then on Monday night, we've got a new show that's only been on about a month. And that's the Motown Request Show. And that's live as well. And you can, um, you know, email in and get your requests and dedications. End of plug. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> what program? Uh, yeah, it's Big L Radio, www.bigl.co.uk or biglradio.co.uk. We've got two websites and they're almost the same. That's on as well. Well, either send us an email there or um, give us a call when you've got a second. We can uh, either jump on your machine if we're allowed to do that or just go through some settings with you. Sorry, were you talking to me? Yeah, sorry, Phil, yep. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Who, who is that, Matt, is it? Or... Yeah. Yeah, does, um, does Tristan not work for you anymore then? He does, yeah, he's probably busy at the moment, so... Oh, because I know he's excellent with Braille displays, isn't he? He is indeed. I say all the, all the guys have, um, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty knowledgeable in everything, but you know, Tris has been here the longest. So, uh, so yeah, I, I even go to him for some, some things as well. Yeah. Well, I've got, um, I've got three, three computers here because you can have three keys anyway, can't you, for JAWS? Um, and uh, the, uh, the Windows 7 one, I've had to keep going back to the old, you know, to uh, JAWS 15 because yeah, otherwise it's gone all over the place with me. Right. <laughs> So at the moment, I'm having to go back to the old versions when I'm doing a live show, because otherwise, you know, I want to get read something and it's just suddenly not there. It's in the wrong column or something like that. So yeah, I'll have to give you guys a ring and um, we'll try and sort it out. But I have got three computers. That's the problem. And I want to get them all set up. No worries. I would say if, um, it, it might help just having a, you know, send, sending us some information on what you're doing, what applications you're in. It could be an application setting or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Well, we'll we'll talk we'll talk some more then um, next week sometime then. Yeah. Absolutely. Give us a give us a shout either by email or. or okay. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, just to say that um, we have just switched. Uh, Sharon is now going to just host the remainder of this session because we were having a couple of funny things here between Jaws and Zoom on my machine. So Sharon will be ma um, moderating, just managing the uh, participants, and. Um, Making sure everybody has behaved. <laughs> I'm cracking the whip now. <laughs> Power. Um, Bernadette has her hand raised. We're actually all unmuted at the moment, so um, if you wanted to go ahead, Bernadette, if you have a question. Yes, hello, that's Bernadette. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I use MVDA. If I wanted to buy jewels for the first time, how much would that actually be? Because I hear that you have to upgrade it every year and it can be quite expensive. Go to Sight and Sound Village. Yeah, yeah we've just uh, we, we've just finished a promotion actually where Jaws uh, Home for the home users has been very cheap. We've been discounting um, all the home users, 
Um, but unfortunately, that just finished at the end of July. Um, next, next site village is in November, isn't it? It is, yeah. I want to say, yeah, we're, we're not sure whether we're going to be running that promotion as yet or not. Okay. So, so Jaws, Jaws Home at the moment is 699. Is that to just a bike for the first time? Yes, that's correct, yeah. It's 99. Wow. Okay, then thank you for that. And what, no, version okay. would, what version would that get you to, or would you have to upgrade it to the current version? Mm. Uh, that, that's the current version at the moment, the 699 is. Um, we have a tiered scale for upgrading as well, so depending on what version you're on, it's at different costs. <clears throat> and you can also get... Um, you can also buy software management agreements. You mentioned, Bernadette, like if you're upgrading... Um, mm. Sorry, software maintenance agreements. So if you are upgrading, you can actually buy two upgrades uh, in advance and you save money on doing that. I'm not sure how much, Matt, but <laughs> you do save a lot, don't you? Yeah, the, um, the, the, home, the home user software maintenance agreement is £200. Yeah. So that essentially gives you two for the price of one. Except okay. during promotions. <laughs> Except during promotions, yeah. <laughs> T and C's apply. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Mike Cassidy here. Sorry, have you finished, Ben? That's why you want to yes, carry I'm, on. Yes, I'm all finished. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Going back to the touch cursor, you can do it with just shift and uh, the plus key, the numpad plus key. Yes, yeah, Stuart um, said that. Did yeah, he that, say? Uh, so he said yeah. shift yeah, and caps lock. That 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 was the laptop. Um. You're, you're talking about the desktop shortcut. I think the laptop. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. No, no desktop. Yeah. yeah. Shift, shift, shift and. Yeah. Shift and plus. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that, uh, Mike? Hmm. Did you say that? Mm. Sorry, there's a bit of background noise there. So. Yeah, I. I couldn't hear. Did Phil Phil ask something? No, I just said uh, Stuart did mention it was uh, shift plus. I was just saying that he's already I said. I thought he said shift and caps lock and plus. Well, he said that as well. <laughs> yes, he said both, I think. <laughs> the latest one was shift and plus. Yeah. Oh. And you have to press the PC key, the, the plus key twice to get out of touch cursor, don't you? Um. It, does, it does prompt you. Right, does I, it? so I can't say. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, Stuart is trying to answer here, but it... I, I can't unmute you, Stuart, for some reason. <laughs> we lost him. Oh, dear. Come back, Stuart. Oh, Stuart. <laughs> Maybe you gave me too much power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm back. <laughs> oh, lost Sorry, him. I'm not sure why I couldn't unmute myself. Yeah. That was strange. So apologies. Um, I'm very sorry about that. We're having strange things today. But just to clarify, um, yes, if you, on a laptop it's uh, shift plus caps lock plus semicolon to get out of, to go back to the, the PC cursor from the touch cursor. Uh, so, so to go into it, it's uh, shift caps lock and semicolon. And then to come back out, it would be your, either your PC cursor command which would be shift and semicolon or your jaws cursor command which would be shift or sorry caps lock and semicolon or your jaws cursor which would be caps lock and um left bracket and the desktop commands again Stuart please yeah so to enter the jaws cursor the touch cursor sorry is shift and the plus key yeah. and to come out is uh well you'll just either minus key for your jaws cursor or plus key for your PC. Actually, I think I haven't done this in a while. I think when you come out of the JAWS, the, the touch cursor, you have to actually go via the JAWS cursor. So you can't just go from JAWS cursor to PC. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Have we any other questions? Or, and, and actually, one of the things we just I was thinking about today was like around suggestions, what other things would people like to hear about if we were to do this type of thing again? Because we chose, I suppose we chose some of the products that were particularly popular and some of the stuff that had been particularly popular for during the summer specials at Site Village. But maybe, maybe there's other things that people would like to hear about in the future. 
Well, I've enjoyed the ones I've taken part in, so thank you. Good. Um, I think Stuart has his hand raised there. Um, uh, if I can't unmute you, Stuart. Stuart, um, sorry, the other Stuart, the Scottish Stuart. <laughs> you might have to try and unmute. Um, try, what's the keystroke? Alt A, is it? Yeah. Try Alt A there, Stuart. I see you, Stuart Beveridge. I see your hand is raised. Am I coming through now? Yeah, yes, you're coming through. Yeah. Sorry, my Zoom has been doing some really odd things as well. Right, we're yeah. back in the game. Um, I just wanted to ask a, a quick um, question to Stuart and um, Martin and Ash and Sharon as well. Um, Ruth's probably tired of me asking this question. I work with Ruth a lot up in Scotland. Um, is there any information on the new L Braille for the Focus 5th Gen? Um, I have the, the L I have the, the L Braille at the moment, and if that machine had a bit of a faster processor, you know, with the Focus 5th Gen, what a machine it would be, but a, a really interesting. So, can anyone help with new info? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I think there's no update as of yet, Stuart. I, and I'm like you, I'm desperately waiting. And like you, I, I, I think the Albrail is an incredible machine. I bring it everywhere with me. Yeah, I think if I looked on the Freedom Scientific website and it looks as though it's come at the Elmbrail, the, the 40 version, the new 40 version, if that makes sense, is supposed to be coming out in September. But they've been very, you know, that's it. I can't see any information other than that, so. I don't think we've any other information on it, Matt, have we? I mean, I know we've, we've been kind of waiting. We've been waiting for a long time. I think it's been put back a couple of times, the release um, from the guys in Russia. So uh, I, I, abs I think the L Braille is a, incredible. The concept, the whole idea is and uh, actually, uh, You'll probably, Stuart. You'll appreciate this. I I always tell the I always tell the story that I went to do a presentation last year somewhere with just the L Braille, and the person who I was setting up the presentation for was very disappointed and said, "I thought you would have brought a laptop with you." Well, you did, really. <laughs> this is a laptop, and I said, "Do you have a HDMI cable?" And then she realized when she had it plugged in. So it's just interesting, people's concept. Uh, oh. Matt's, and Matt's just saying on the chat that there'll be different uh, different uh, processor is different specs. Yes, there's an i7 and yeah, and an i5 is it or something? Yeah. yeah. So you'll be able to choose is kind of what you have, what you get. Yeah, that won't be the i7 for me. I thought it'd just being me, but I mean, honest, I've never seen anything. I mean, I I eulogise to Ruth. Um, she she takes really about a ten minute snooze when she sees me because I eulogise to Ruth about the concept. Um, because what I like about it is, you know, like my Jaws laptop. I have a you know, a superior, well, not a superior JAWS laptop. And, you know, if you learn the keystrokes on the Elm Braille, the, the keystrokes on my JAWS laptop are the same yeah. as in the Elm Braille. You know, does that make, make, so, you know, like on the taskbar, Windows 1 takes me straight to Google Chrome, and it's the same on, you know, both devices. So the, the crossover in is fantastic. Yeah. It's a great mm. machine. So we're we're just I think we're all just waiting, waiting for it to arrive. Yeah. No thanks for that. I just just thought I would ask. Any other questions from anybody else? Okay, I'm just going to lower some hands. If that's okay, there's some hands raised, but I think there were previous questions. So if I lower some hands, um, and then you can raise your hand again if you had another question. Okay. Feel free to raise your hand or ask away. We're um, pretty much all unmuted. <laughs> I think somebody, just one question that came up, I think at Sharon's, Sharon's session on Monday. Burned it, I'm not sure if it might have been yourself actually, but, or maybe not, but somebody asked about moving the mouse using the key. That was me. Yeah, that it was me. you, okay. Me. I, I hadn't written. Um, so was that, Bernadette, was that in reference to the JAWS either. cursor? Sorry? Was that in reference to the JAWS cursor when you asked that? 
Um, yeah, because I've got a bit of sight and I've tried to help my person, my friend who's totally blind. And I say, oh, you've got to click on this, you've got to click on that. He goes, how do I do that with the keyboard? I go, I have no idea. I'm a mouse user. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now, there is, a, there is a feature, by the way, in JAWS. Um, Asher and Matt might correct me on this because I'm not as, I, I have to say, it's not something I use. I think it's called mouse echo or echo mouse. Like essentially what it does is it will echo as you move the mouse around. JAWS will echo or will echo the tracking of the mouse. Mm. So that might be useful for your friend in that you would at least be able to, he would be able to hear what you're doing with the mouse. But if he wants to be able to do that, the JAWS cursor is probably the way to do it. Okay. That echo is definitely in Fusion, by the way. Okay, yeah. It's the same as the um, Zoom text settings that Ruth went through on Wednesday. Um, I'm not sure where the setting is in JAWS. There must be a mouse echo setting in JAWS. can't remember where it is. Yeah, Matt just says it's in settings, and then it's uh, within JAWS in the settings center, and then enable mouse echo. There we go. Thank you. Sorry, yeah, we, we were having a few problems unmuting ourselves. Um, it's easier to find it through the setting center for the mouse echo. Um, and then just to give you an idea of what happens is when you move your mouse around the screen, it's just going to relay anything back that it hits. Uh, so Bernadette, you'll probably find that quite handy. Okay, thank you. Um, which versions is um I think it started in version 2018, maybe. Yeah, we're looking at a version of 2018 at the moment, and it's on there. Mm. Interesting. Alert from Moni to everyone. Call it. I'm a leak here. I'm a vision 11 user and my host. So we have a, an email or a message here from Monique. Um, and Monique says, hi, I'm a Fusion 11 user, mostly use it for magnification. I'm um, looking to learning computer programming and um, wonder about using it with a, with a screen reader. So you're, Monique, you're looking at, I suppose, coding, uh, learning coding, and you're wondering if is, any, is anybody else doing something similar? Um, so has anybody, and I, I know there's loads of people who are coding using magnification and using screen reading. Don't know if anyone else has, has done any of that. Um, Stuart, I can just say I've done a bit of, um, oh, no, I'm thinking of screen reading, actually. Um, I'm thinking more of JAWS users. I've taught basic web editing and found that Notepad Plus was good. Yeah. I, I, Monique, I'd probably, it depends where you're looking to do it and what, what they're offering, what kind of languages they're looking at teaching um, in terms of what kind of programming languages, but... Um, I'm certainly aware of some low vision people who've done it in the past, so it is doable. And if you want to get in touch, if you want to get get in touch with me, we can we can do something, or we can have a chat about it. Matt is saying here that Visual Studio has a, a, a settings in for Jaws. From Moni to everyone, Colin currently self learning, Stuart is still trying to see if I like it or not. Um, Monique is currently self learning, still trying to see if, see if I like it or not. Okay, brilliant. Anything we can do to help you, just give us a shout. Monique is only up the road from us, so she knows us well. Anything else that anybody wants to ask about? And remember, you know, it doesn't just have to be about. Um, questions are about things that we did this week. Uh, one thing I want to just mention is that for anybody who's looking at, you know, there's a lot of people who just want a basic mobile phone, who want a device that they can kind of take out. It has buttons, makes a call, reads their texts. Um, we have the Minivision phone and um, Ash, our colleague who's with us today, has done a really great quick start tutorial 
just to get you up and running with the mini vision. Um, so if you get a mini vision or if you have a mini vision phone and you want to explore that tutorial, we have it uh, on our website. Would you be able to send the website? Because I'm quite interested, please. Because I've I have the I look I keep using the Dora phones, but um, the print is bit for me to see my text messages. So I'd like something that would have speech on it. That's quite simple. But uh, this mini vision sound pretty much what I might be able to look at. Yeah. So uh, it it's on the Sight and Sound website, Brenda. Oh, okay. Uh, so you go into products, you can see the mini vision there. Um, on the website um, and, and just the other thing to uh, reference and I, I think Sharon may have mentioned it on Monday but the shortcuts uh, session on Monday uh, Sharon has her own shortcuts website Sharon's shortcuts.ie if people want to look on there and there's a mailing list where you get your weekly shortcut of the week so um, you, every Monday morning you'll get a, a new shortcut that you can use Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> from phones, iPhone to everyone. Colin, do you know if the JAWS annual subscription... Uh, okay, so we've got a query from uh, an iPhone. Do you know if the JAWS uh, home annual subscription will be available in the UK? And I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, it isn't at present. I think VFO are trying to work out how to do that outside of the US. Um, this time, if we just select the save as command, we'll so yeah, we, we don't we don't we don't really know to be honest because VFO or um, Freedom Scientific Vespero haven't come back to us on that, so it's just USA <laughs> at the moment. Uh, query: Somebody put a chat here. Michael. Michael. Oh, yeah, uh, Michael, the 4P Smart Vision Plus calendar. Yeah. I'm not. Michael, I don't know if you, if you want to say something. Yeah. I just asked a question. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Um, yeah, I've got Smart Vision 2, and I have this huge problem since it's last upgraded by the, um, the, the system BIOS or whatever it was, it was upgraded. Um, that the calendar, when you put an appointment in it, uh, and you put a, uh, a sort of notification of the meeting that you can't shut the thing up. <laughs> uh, you, it says alert, snooze, or stop. You click on stop, or at least you think you click on stop, and it carries on um, 10 minutes later. It's almost as if the stop doesn't really work, but it acts as a snooze, and 10 minutes later, you come up with a meeting again. I've had to delete all my... Um, my notifications for my meetings because it's driving me crazy. I have mentioned this to the guys in Nottinghamshire, uh, but uh, I haven't managed to get any resolution on it. Hello. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Michael. Yeah. What what calendar are you using? Is it synced to your Gmail or is it just a, is it a, a standalone calendar on the phone? It's the Google Calendar. I presume it's okay. Gmail one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I I I I have no experience of this. Um, I haven't used that. Um, Matt is suggesting here the agenda app. Yes. As opposed to the calendar app. I don't know if you've used that or not. Well, I just use whatever it provides on, on, on the thing. I thought the agenda was a predecessor of the calendar. I, I'd, probably, um, I'd probably bring this one to support after this. Matt is saying here that both are available, so you can use either, is my, is my understanding from this. Um, but the guys in support have the facility to team viewer to the smart vision, so they will be able to. Yes, I know they tried that. Um, but of course, it doesn't misbehave when they're doing it. <laughs> uh, Matt is saying here that Capsis advise using agenda apparently and, and, and not calendar so I'm, I'm assuming agenda will sync with your Gmail anyway right okay I'll give it a go so maybe try agenda and hopefully your, your, your existing Gmail calendar should sync over to that anyway with the appointments okay thank you I'll try that anybody else with queries or Questions or anything else that you want to ask? It could, uh, as I said, it doesn't have to be specifically related to products we talked about this week or 
thoughts for the future on what you might like us to look at if we were to develop or run more of this online training? Um, yes, yeah, me again, Stuart. Phil. Uh, Phil. Yeah, um, I've got 2018 on, on three machines, right? Now, one of them's working pretty much okay, but th there's one of the ones we installed it on, and when you turn the computer on, sometimes all the keys kind of get locked and you get like control plus windows comes in and then you can't get rid of it and it, then you just have to turn it off and reboot it again. Uh, is it possible maybe the version I've got on one, the particular machine that does it, whether we could scrap the version and, and start again without using, losing the key? I'm, you know, if, if, you, if yeah. you install it and it goes wrong or you've done something and it just doesn't work out right, how do you actually uninstall it and reinstall it without, without using your key? Okay. okay, if you uninstall JAWS only and don't remove shared components, you won't lose your key. If for some reason the key gets lost, uh, you know, and, and you find that you have to reauthorize, um, you, can, you can do that or you can contact the support line and those guys can sort it. <laughs> So I was just wondering whether to try and uninstall the, the one that's going wrong and then try and install it again. So you think that might be worth giving it a go? Because it, it does all kinds of weird things. It's very strange. Sometimes it will put Windows control key down together and you can't turn it off. Uh, sometimes it might be shift and Windows key will go down together. And, is that uh, not sticky keys, Phil? It's, it's not sticky keys uh, enabling itself? somehow yeah maybe that's what it's doing but it's not something that i'm doing it just does it on its own and then okay. of course i don't know how to get out of it and i have to just turn the machine off and start again so <laughs> yeah perhaps i'll try and um get into up for you guys next week and then uh, if we can get a list of settings that will be appropriate for what i'm using it for and if i can't sort it out then i'll i'll perhaps get one of you to help me reinstall it or something yeah, give mm -hmm. give give the support guys a call next week, Phil, and um, that you know you, you can ha go maybe try to talk through that, you know. And it's nineteen uh, two thousand nineteen, but much better than eighteen because I've got the SMA and I haven't got around. As I'm having problems with two thousand eighteen, I haven't bothered to uh, try and install two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, so we actually did a session last year on 2019. I'm just going to, because off the top of my head, I can't remember, I'm going to pull up the what's new in 19, and I'll give you a sense of... Um, so one, I suppose there's a few changes in Office 20, for Office 365 in particular, for things like notification of miss, missed spellings. Um, there's um, support for co-authoring documents in Microsoft Word, better virtual, su virtual cursor support, support in PowerPoint presentations. That's when you're running PowerPoint presentations. Um, nav navigation quick keys in Google Docs, a new way to add and remove vocalizer expressive voices. So without having to install them, um, you, can, you can do... Um, you can actually just uh, preview the voices before you install them. Um, picture Smart for describing images, that's a really good one. So that's where you, if you have a picture, JAWS uses uh, um, AI as such, I suppose, to go off and try to describe the picture for you. Um, improved support for Kindle. A new option to, to disable the Quit JAWS prompt, so when you press insert F4 or Alt F4 within the JAWS window, you don't have to have the JAWS prompt. So that's just a, a bit of a summary. There's probably more stuff there, but I just pulled out a few of them um, that might be of interest. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just sorry, Matt is just uh, putting a message here. Um, Matt has a quick unrelated tip for JAWS with Adobe Reader. Matt is unable to unmute himself. Sharon, I don't know if you can un unmute him. We're having weird, uh, it looks like everyone's having strange Zoom problems today. <laughs> oh, there we go. I'm on now. Oh, there we oh, there's go. Adam, Matt. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, it's just a quick one that comes up quite frequently in support. It's a known issue that a lot of users tend to experience. Um, so, yeah, JAWS users trying to access an Adobe Reader file, they might sometimes find that as they're trying to read it, JAWS keeps telling them it's blank. 
Um, so if the arrow down, it just keeps saying blank, blank, blank. Yeah, yeah. And if you find that ever happens, um, this might be useful to some people. Just open the Adobe Reader document and then press Control and K. That will take you into the Adobe Reader preferences. Um, and then just down arrow until you get to a bit called Security Enhanced. There'll be two. They've got Security and also Security Enhanced. So go to that. Um, and then just press Alt and M for mic. And that will untick a box. What you want to do is untick the box that says enable protected mode at startup. Um, because when that's enabled, it sort of shuts out JAWS from reading the uh, document. Oh. Um, it was like a recent update, so it probably only um, affects some newer sort of JAWS versions. I'm not totally sure when from, but we do get that a lot. So, um, yeah, it's a good thing to watch out for. Just untick enable protected mode and then sort of okay that, and that should get you uh, up and running after a restart. You do need to restart your PC after you've done that. That's great to know. And that's in that um, link of settings that um, you recommended. Yeah, that's Ash. right. Yeah. Um, and by the way, there was, just because Ash has reminded me, there was a JAWS, JAWS update that came out this week for 2019. Um, I believe on Tuesday it was released. And that is to support a very specific change to Skype that was made last week to the Skype desktop client, which may have some impact on accessibility. So if you have JAWS 2019 and you haven't updated, um, it's a good idea to do that. Any other questions or comments or anything else anybody wants to ask? Yes, yeah, what's this DC then uh, of uh, Adobe? What does the DC part of it mean? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. I don't know if the guys... It's just what they know. call it. I'm not, not sure what it stands for. Um, but it's just instead of the number Adobe Reader 10, I just changed it to DC for some reason. Uh, so that is the correct one I've got then, Adobe D. Yeah, that's the latest, yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. <clears throat> yeah. Nothing to do with Washington DC then. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, so that would be your view. Uh, so if you have a password, and password will... Uh... i just get rid of that background noise there. I think that's the guys in Northampton are busy, yeah. Yeah, I think they're very busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I mean, uh, unless anybody else has any questions um, or anything else you'd like to add... <laughs> Oh, Stuart, I was going to say, I was just saying, going to say about the ideas for future seminars. Um, I didn't get to go through all my shortcuts on oh, Monday. Yeah. So I would kind of started Excel. And do you remember Excel was behaving badly? Yes. <laughs> um, and the, there was also, I was going to talk about PowerPoint as well, but um, we could maybe do a separate, we wouldn't have time now, but we maybe do specific applications and they'd be shorter but um if anyone's interested definitely because we want to do more of the the shortcuts pieces anyway okay so we're definitely i think shortcuts are a good idea we'll definitely be scheduling some more shortcut sessions um and we will be just, you know, keep an eye on our blogs. If you're, if you're part on our mailing list and you get our newsletters, our podcasts, all that kind of stuff, we'll make sure to keep this information current because there will be more stuff happening um, in this uh, online training space over the next little while. And just on the shortcut, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it just, um, it just didn't seem to be working there. Um, just on the shortcuts thing, um, if you want to join my mailing list, you just go on to my website, sharons-shortcuts.ie. Um, and actually, if you just put Sharon's shortcuts in Google, I think I come up with the Clark, first. Michael and um, has left the meeting. And uh, you, you can put your email and tick a box for GDPR and you submit that and go on to my mailing list to get a shortcut every Monday, but also you can always, if you've got any questions about a particular shortcut, like how do I do this in PowerPoint, um, I can respond to that as well. So you can always email me and ask me what is the shortcut for this or do a search on the website, although there's no PowerPoint on it. 
<laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, and uh, definitely good to have the um, good to have the weekly shortcut every Monday. Great way it's to good start. Great way to start the week. Yes. <laughs> great way to start the week. I have a lot of people who aren't screen reader users on my mailing list as well. You know, so I'm slowly converting the world. We're changing the world to shortcuts. That's the plan. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> Okay, well, just to, um, I suppose we should just thank everybody for, um, for coming on today, for joining the session. I hope it was useful. Sorry, we had a couple of glitches with Zoom. It sounds like a couple of people had the same issues with the software. I'm not sure what that is. Um, but thank you for... Yeah, I mean, if you want to come back to us... And thank you for, um, for your questions and your engagement. There were some really useful questions today, and we will be making this session available as a podcast. Particular thanks to Sharon, who jumped on to host, uh, take over the hosting of this meeting um, midway through. That's very much appreciated. And as I say, we will be back with lots more uh, online education in the future. The summer school was our first way, our first real uh, I suppose, step into this area and we've learned a lot from it and thank you for your patience in, in bearing with us during the week as we went through this process. So it's something that Sight and Sound want to continue and that we are going to do more of. So thank very you very idea. much. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thanks good everybody. Idea. Brilliant. Bye bye. Alert, Stuart Doug Beveridge has left the meeting. Uh, and this podcast will be available shortly. They're all going. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye, bye everyone. Cheers. Bye. 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 All F four. Leave meeting. The alert. Moni has left the meeting. All F four. Zoom meeting ID call of eight five five dash one six three dash nine. Alert. Toby Doug Brooks has left the meeting. Alert. Philip Troll has left the meeting. All F four. Leave meeting. Do you want to leave this meeting? Yes, I don't know why. I can't do it. I'm the host, aren't I? So I can end the meeting. Here you go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>